Good day, folks. Today we're going to be looking at Thevenin's Theorem. Pretty cool theorem, actually. What it says is you can take a network, a uh, source, voltage source, current source, multiple resistor network. It just has to be a single port network, meaning there are two cut points on this network. And you can reduce it into a simple voltage source with internal resistance. There is a similar theorem called Norton's theorem that essentially says, that says the same thing, except that uh, it would be a current source with parallel internal resistance rather than a voltage source, which would make sense because we could always do a, uh, a uh, source conversion between those two things. But as an example here, I'm going to start with this little circuit. I have a voltage source, three resistors, and then I have a, a load out here. And what we're really saying is you could take this network out here, these three resistors and this voltage source, and turn it into an equivalent circuit. And no matter what value of the load, you would get the same result. So this is a really nice simplification technique. But I do have to caution you about one thing. There is no such thing as a singular Thevenin equivalent for any given circuit. You can cut this circuit anywhere. In other words, I can cut it right here, and here's my two connection points, right, my port, for our load. I get a Thevenin circuit that drives our load. But I could just as easily cut it right here, right, here and here, and I could find a Thevenin circuit that drives our three. Or, um, you know, I could cut it right here, so I find the Thevenin circuit that drives R2 plus R load. So there are actually several of them. Now, you're also, by the way, not limited to a single source. You could have more than one source. What we have to do is find out what this Thevenin voltage and this Thevenin resistance happen to be. Well, it turns out the Thevenin voltage is the unloaded open circuit voltage. In other words, what you would do is rip out your uh, remainder of the circuit. In this case, it's just our load. Um, imagine putting a voltmeter out there and measuring what that voltage is. And then the second part, the Thevenin resistance, is the resistance that you would see looking into that port. So if I cut it here, it's a question of what do I see looking in? Now a common error is people figure out what the impedance is or the resistance is that this source is driving, but that's not the case. It's what the load or the cut point you see looking back in, because after all, you could have mul multiple sources here, right? It wouldn't make sense to say, what does the source see if you have three sources? So what you wind up with is something like this. Here's an E Thevenin and an R Thevenin. So my point here is that this circuit should have the same value of load voltage. In other words, this V load two should be the same as this V load over here as long as this R load and this R load 2 are the same value, right? So how do I find these numbers, practically speaking, right? Like I said in lab, I could hook up a meter out here. Um, well, on paper, right, you cut the circuit, so just forget that this even exists. You look in here, you replace your sources with their ideal internal resistance. Remember, for a voltage source, that's a short. For a current source, that's an open. So if I short this, what do I see? I see R1 in parallel with R3, right? 300 in parallel with 600. That's going to be 200 ohms. And again, looking in from here, that's going to be in series with the 800. So that should be 1,000 ohms. That's my R Thevenin. What's my open circuit voltage? Well, if I remove this, this is an open. So there's going to be no current flowing out here. This is an open. So there's no drop across R2. In other words, the voltage here at V load is the same as the voltage at this node, because this is zero. So uh, this reduces just to a simple voltage divider. 12 volt source, 300, 600. I need to find the voltage across the 600. All right, so 600 divided by 900 times 12 volts will get us eight volts. This thing should be identical. Now, as I said, you could go in lab and do this. So here's a little configuration with an ohm meter. You would replace the voltage source with its ideal internal resistance, which is a short, and then stick an, uh, uh, an ohmmeter out here and see what the resistance is. 
So we can do that right here in the simulator. Boom, and it's telling us it's 1K. Okay, beautiful. We could also do the open circuit voltage out here. Right? I could come out here and say, um, I'll simulate an open circuit by just putting in a, uh, a crazy huge value for the resistance. All right, see, it's like 100 billion ohms. Okay. And then we can say, all right, what do I get for a voltage? There's my 8 volts. Okay. So far, so good. So, practical way of doing it, and then, you know, a paper way of doing it. So let me um, take this resistor here bring it back to its original value. So if the theorem is correct, 100 ohms, 100 ohms, we should get the same exact value for V-load and V-load 2. Let's run it. 727.27, 727.27. If the voltage is the same, current's going to have to be the same. Ohm's law. Does it just work out for 100? Let's put in something else, right? Put in... 10 ohms. It's going to be pretty small. So you can build this and try it. Okay. Seventy-nine point two one millivolts. Seventy-nine point two one millivolts. Put in something bigger. All right. Let's put in ten k ohms. Get our analysis. 7.27 volts, 7.27 volts. Right. Whatever you want to put in there, you're going to get the same result. So Thevenin's theorem is uh, very useful for simplifying these circuits. Um, if you have a situation where part of the circuit, in this case a load, is changing, it's a lot easier to analyze it using the simplification rather than the entire circuit. And this is not a big circuit, right? You could imagine a much, much more complicated circuit with multiple sources and, you know, dozens of things. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to analyze that in this form than in the full form, right? So, again, to reiterate, you find the open circuit output voltage. You find the uh, effective resistance looking in from the cut point. And remember that cut point is just two points, right? That's what we call a port. And there could be many different ports in a circuit, you know. You could ask, what's the equivalent circuit driving R1, right? You know, driving half of a circuit, half of a big circuit. In this case, we're just using this one th little thing at the end just because it's easy to, easy to deal with. All right? Very useful. Norton's theorem, the exact sort of mirror where we're talking about a Norton current source and a parallel uh, resistance. Our Norton and our Thevenin have to be the same value, obviously. Um, as a matter of fact, speaking of, of uh, source conversions, you can look at source conversions as sort of a special case um, when, we, when we look at uh, Thevenin's equivalent, right? Um, if you just took a, a voltage source or a current source and you quote-unquote Thevenized it, right? You had a current source and you Thevenized it, you would get the equivalent source. Your Thevenin equivalent would be the equivalent of the current source. So it's kind of Kind of like a special case, um, but extremely handy, right? We'll be looking at this again in the future.